Denny Avdia, the six foot eight basketball player who had a tournament clinching and one against Spain, and immediately looks to their bench, waves goodbye, says adios, and finally salutes them, only to rationalize it by saying, quote, I don't want to be boring. Now, it would be very easy to hate on this guy if he wasn't such an interesting and damn good basketball player. To be honest, I'm actually thinking next year he's getting drafted to the NBA in the first round, if not taking a top five spot. I wouldn't even rule him out being the number one overall, so let me explain. What is up, guys? It's your favorite coach's favorite editor. We're here to talk about the Israeli prodigy, Denny Abdia. But before we jump into this video, we post content and breakdowns just like this every week, including vlogs where we sometimes even take an in-person look at the athletes we do breakdowns on. We work really hard to get out at least one video a week, so go ahead and drop a like. YouTube can sometimes forget about the little guys, and as it turns out, those can really help a channel like ours grow. Okay, so you know that game we were talking about earlier? Yeah, that was to secure Israel's second straight under-20 European championship. Denny dropped 23 points, seven assists, three blocks, and took down tournament MVP honors. This concluded somewhat of a stellar season for the up and comer, so let's brush over some of the numbers Denny's been able to put up recently. Then we could discuss what kind of player he is and conclude with the most likely scenario to pan out in the coming months. And I'll tell you guys right now, it's unique to say the least. Denny is 18 years old and also the son to former Israeli basketball star, Zufar Avdia. His professional basketball career began in November of 2017 after signing a six-year contract with Maccabi Tel Aviv. That same month, he had his day Debut and officially became the youngest player ever to play for Maccabi at just 16 years old. A year later, he became a member of Israel's under-20 team. He led them to gold in the 2018 FIBA Europe Under-20 Championship, averaging 12.7 points, 6.4 rebounds, 1.1 assists, and 1.3 steals per game. The following year, a similar story took place, with Denny leading the same team to their second consecutive gold in FIBA Europe Under-20, and was named tournament MVP after a dominating performance, and most notably dropping 26 points, 11 rebounds, and five steals against France. Avdia makes his living on transitional offense. He's a very fast-paced player that can knock down threes in transition or drop dimes for his teammates for an easy layup. And although shooting is one of his strong points, at the same time, as of right now, he's known to be somewhat spotty, or at least not quite at that NBA level as far as consistency goes, as we've seen him knock down field goal after field goal one game and shoot less than 50% from the free throw line the next, which could suggest some volatility taking place in his game. I would guess it's primarily in his head because obviously the mechanics are there there. He has a great looking shot and when he's on, he's on. This idea is actually reinforced by the fact that after going three for eight at the free throw line in a game against Serbia, he said, I'm trying to work on them every day and punish myself when I'm not making them and proceeds to wait until the clearing of the gym and shot free throws well after midnight. He then went 12 for 14 at the free throw line the next day. Essentially, he's very hard on himself and can get the job done when it needs to be, but it's likely he gets in his own head at times and self-sabotages to a certain degree. But let's get into this very fascinating trait of his in more detail in just a second. I also want to add his defensive skills or something else that you could find mentioned throughout his scouting reports. It's an area he's already polished enough in to play at that next level. He also has a great basketball IQ and has perfected the pick and roll play as well as off ball possessions. To sum it all up, he's very methodical, regimented, and has an extremely clever play style on top of being a well-rounded and very skilled player too. But I want to get back to that point I was making. Denny is ultra competitive. When Denny was asked about a game, he stated, our mentality was the same. We came to to kill every night to win. Suggesting Denny is extremely competitive is somehow really an understatement from what I've been able to find. Of course, this could be a good or a bad thing depending on how you look at it. It's also been reported by ESPN he will sulk towards teammates or scold them if they make mistakes. He's also been known to be extremely critical of his own mistakes and has been seen many times burying his hands into his face because of something as trivial as a missed layup or a turnover. It's clear he's very judgmental towards himself, which could be one of his downfalls or his greatest strengths. Of course, when you think of the legendary Kobe Bryant, one of the main things that comes to mind is an unmatched and obsessive, you could probably make the case for an unhealthy work ethic. Although this obviously served him well, so there's no doubt it could be extremely beneficial quality to have and can drive an athlete to fine tuning their game to unseen levels. However, despite Denny's lows, his highs are equally extreme. Previous to the game we talked about earlier against Spain, after a win in the semifinals of that tournament, Denny put the Israeli flag over his head and walked into an ecstatic crowd of hundreds of fans and was immediately hoisted into the air. He led chants, sang songs, and even lifted up a baby into the air, quoting the line. Yeah, we're really not kidding about that. It's right here. As you might expect, in that fateful game against Spain, the same exact thing took place, only difference being, he was shirtless the second time around. 
But this all brings us to the present. Turns out Israel requires military training for three weeks. So as of August 5th, 2019, he's going to be preoccupied, which will shorten his summer trainings and run up to the start of his season with Maccabi Tel Aviv, which by the way is expected to consist of a lot of pressure for both Denny to ball out and Maccabi to play him and give him the freedom he might need to live up to his current levels of NBA hype. After this, most likely being Denny's final season, we should have a much better idea of his potential stock value going into the draft, but we're going to have to wait and see on that one. As you guys might be right now, many scouts are also torn, not only because of his volatility and his talent, but also his body language and attitude, which historically turns out to be a sort of wild card. And despite Denny drawing comparisons to Luka Doncic, at this point, Luka's career, once he was eligible to enter the NBA draft, he'd already played over 2,000 Euro League and ACB minutes, which is more than four times as much as Denny. So clearly a full and established track record being another uncertainty of Denny's prospect. After all is said and done, I think wild card is the best way to describe him because there's no doubt I can easily see him being a top five draft pick, yet there's also a potential reality where teams are simply timid of such unpredictability in Denny's game and character and choose to opt out of picking him up. What do you guys think? Will Denny get drafted to the NBA? If so, what range? I'm going to guess he'll go relatively early in the first, all things considered. Regardless of what happens, we'll be right here with the follow-up as that time nears. So make sure if you're not already, go ahead and subscribe to your favorite 4,000 sub hopeful channel, Cortical Hoops. Thank you so much for watching from the gatekeepers of YouTube's basketball community. Stay tuned and we'll see you guys on the next one.